recently, a very famous British chemist, Ken Wade, Kenneth Wade, of the University of Durham, died. And he was also, began his career here at the University of Nottingham. He was an undergraduate here and a research student. And I found his undergraduate record card. Here it gives his name and so on on the front, and on the back it has his photo. And it's quite an interesting thought, if you're a student now watching this video, that in 70 years' time, or 60 years' time, when you finish your career, somebody may be looking at your record cards and finding out what you were like when you were young. Ken Wei was an inorganic chemist who spent most of his life working on the element boron. And he is one of the few chemists that I know that has actually got his name into the literature. There are few people who get their names on elements, borium, rentigenium, and so on, but that only happens after people are dead. Ken Wade has his name associated with a set of rules that explain the shapes of a whole series of boron compounds. Ken Wade came up with this, this theory, which, is, which he called polyhedral skeletal electron pair theory. Um, but we tend to call them, I tend to call them to my second years, I call them Wade's rules. There are so many compounds in chemistry that it's often very confusing. Why does this one have that shape? Why does that one have a different shape? Ken produced a set of rules that explained why a particular type of boron compound adopted certain shapes. They allow us to um, predict the structures of these things called borings, these boron hydride compounds. Um, so this is kind of like the, the first one. So this is, this is diborane. So we've got these boron atoms here in black, and then we've got these bridging hydrides. So we've got two of those, okay, and we've got four terminal hydrides. So it's like three, it's like if I show you, we've almost got two BH3s kind of coming together, okay? And they can make bigger structures like this, which is tetraborane. He came to this university in 1950. He was an undergraduate here from 1951 to 1954. So he finished as an undergraduate 60 years ago. So it tells you the subjects that he studied at school. It also tells you the name of his tutor, who was the famous explosives lecturer B.D. Shaw. And on the back is a rather fine photo of him. He looked quite serious. Students wore ties in those days. And over here it has his marks. And over here in the final year, you can see they marked with Greek letters. Alpha was good, then beta not so good, and gamma was terrible. And here he got beta for organic chemistry, alpha minus for inorganic chemistry. And for physical, he got beta query plus. I have no idea what that means, really means. I think that the staff could put whatever number they like to this. And over here, it says that he did research with Dr. Greenwood. And then after that, he went to the University of Durham. And he spent most of his career in the University of Durham, which is in the northeast of England, not far from Newcastle, where I worked early on in my career. And that's how I got to know Ken. And he was an absolutely wonderful person in terms of supporting younger researchers like me. So basically what, what they do is they govern um, the, the shapes that they adopt. So what you do is you add up, you take your BH unit and any other hydrides that are left over, and you add them up. And each BH unit gives you two electrons to hold your cluster together. Okay? And if we have missing vertices, that leads to open structures. So um, we have closer if they're all closed. Nido, which means nest, I think. Um, that's like kind of slightly open. Then arachno, which is more open again, which I think comes from like spider, like cobweb, um, and, and so on. Um, the nice thing about Wade's rules is by using this other theory called isolobal theory, um, we can interchange things like CH, so carbon hydrogen units for BHs, and make carburane, so mixed boron carbon things. Um, we can also use it for putting metals in instead, so metal fragments can go in, they're metalloboranes. So Wade's rules, um, covers a lot, of, a, a lot of areas of main group chemistry, certainly. We also have his PhD thesis here, 
you can see the title addition compounds of boron trichloride and gallium trichloride. If I can summarize his thesis rather simply, boron trichloride is a molecule with boron here and three chlorines, and it's a flat molecule, a planar molecule, and it doesn't, boron does not have as many electrons as one would like for a stable compound. It's so-called electron deficient, so it will react with compounds like ammonia that have spare electrons. So the ammonia here with a pair of electrons shown by the silver paper can interact with the boron to make a complex. This is what he studied and you end up with a sort of complex like this where you have boron here and ammonia here and it squeaks. Well, it didn't really squeak, but you get the idea. So if we look in the thesis, you can see it was last borrowed from the library in the 27th of November 1973, and it was then taken out for this video by my colleague Sam Tang on the 31st of March 2014. So as far as we can see, nobody has read this book for more than 40 years. Is, is that kind of sad? It's not really sad because all the important results will have been published in papers. So this is more of the details. What is interesting about this, that of course the thesis was typed by hand. There were no electric typewriters, no computers. And the diagrams were drawn by hand and actually pasted in. Of course you needed several copies of your thesis. So you had to type it with a so-called piece of carbon paper like this, which you put between two sheets of paper, and then when you typed, if you typed very hard, you could write something like boron trichloride, and all being well, it would come out underneath, often not very bright. This is the top copy of the thesis, which had to go into the library, and the carbon copies were given out to the supervisor and probably another copy to his parents because most students give a thesis to their parents. And that's why we carbon copy our emails. Yes. The interesting thing about Ken was that he began his career as an experimental chemist but then later on in his career he became more of a theoretician. This type of theoretical chemistry is extremely valuable because it enables chemists doing their experiments to understand their results.